What's up everybody, Lucasfilm Games is back! Yes, Lucasfilm Games, probably best known for their work in the 80s and 90s with point and click adventures and adaptations of Star Wars and Indiana Jones are back, this time as a overarching branding thing that's going to create video games moving into the future about all of their products, all of their brands and maybe even making some new ones along the way. So let's get into what we know about it so far. Indiana Jones, probably the biggest news that they're launching with is that Indiana Jones is finally getting a brand new video game. It's been 11 years, I think that's right, since the last Indiana Jones game, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb on the Xbox. It might have also been on a GameCube or something as well, but I don't know and I don't care. Anyway, that was the last game. It wasn't bad. Probably wasn't good either in retrospect, but I played it and I enjoyed it. So it's going to be well about 15 years at least between these Indiana Jones games. This one is being made by Bethesda, more specifically Machine Games, best known for making the Wolfenstein games. Yes, they kill Nazis, they hate Nazis, so they are perfect for an Indiana Jones game, because guess what, he hates Nazis too. So we don't know too much about the game beyond that. So hopefully with this Indiana Jones game, it's going to be third person, I imagine. Because half of the joy of playing an Indiana Jones game is being able to see Indiana Jones. If you can't see the character, then are you really Indiana Jones? Does it really matter if it's an Indiana Jones game? So I hope it's third person. Of course it is from Machine Games, they've only ever done first person games. But hey, look at Guerrilla Games, look at a bunch of other studios who've branched out and went from first person to third person. It's been done before, they can change perspective, I'm sure of it. And they're very talented people there. Now the Wolfenstein games as well, they are very action oriented first person shooters but there is story in there, there is character in there, they do know how to tell a story and hopefully that's something they catalyze on with this Indiana Jones game. Hopefully it is a mix of story, character, action and puzzles as well. Puzzles will be really important for an archaeologist. The big question mark here is Harrison Ford. Is Harrison Ford going to be Indiana Jones in this? Whether it be the voice or whether it just be his appearance and likeness. I'm actually hoping that he's not. I like Harrison Ford and I like his depiction of Indiana Jones, but I'm hoping Machine Games comes out and says, hey, this is our version of Indiana Jones. So it doesn't look like him, it doesn't sound like him. I don't know who you get to play the part of him. Maybe you have a different voice actor to a different likeness, I don't know. But hopefully it's just a little different. Hopefully it's like their version of like Telltale's Batman, where it's like, hey, this is our version of Batman. I think that would be really cool and it would also be a big testing ground for the future of the Indiana Jones franchise because let's face it, Harrison Ford's only going to do one more movie and then that's it. But yeah, this Indiana Jones game, I'm hyped as hell about it, I'm all for it, it sounds cool, we don't know much else about it at this point. We also know that we're going to be getting a massive Star Wars game and if you know your stuff about this, massive Star Wars game has multiple meanings here. It's going to be an open world action adventure RPG according to some of the job listings there. And it's been made by Massive Games. So Massive best known for The Division 2. So this has instant like alarm bells like ooh 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 ooh. They make multiplayer online games all about shooting each other, all about exploring these sandbox environments. They are games as a service essentially. Is that what we're getting here? I hope not. It doesn't sound like we are, which is a good thing. It is Ubisoft, so we know what Ubisoft does now. Their bread and butter is open world RPGs now. And for better or for worse. Some of them are good, some of them not so much. There's a lot of potential here. And it's worth saying that Ubisoft games are often led by one studio, but they have a bunch of other studios chipping in and doing their bit here and there. So this is a massive game, as in the studio is massive, but chances are there's going to be much of our studios working on this as well. But I'm hoping this is more shooter based and less lightsaber based. I'm kind of getting a little tired of Jedi video games. Like obviously being a Jedi is cool and all, but maybe give us a choice of being a Jedi in this game. That would be interesting. I think there's a lot more to explore in Star Wars Galaxy than just being a Jedi, It's the point that I'm trying to make. And hopefully this is a way of doing that. 
The other thing is this is open world. So what does that mean in Star Wars? Are we focusing entirely on one location, one planet? Or are we going to be galaxy hopping? Are we going to be able to get into a ship, fly around, go to a different place? This is going to be a bit like Mass Effect where there's smaller open areas in certain locations and you can fly between them. Although Mass Effect you can't really fly, you can just say, hey, go there. Again, this is very early development. I think we're talking five years at least before we actually get this game in any sort of state or way or form. Yeah. The other game that we kind of know about, it hasn't officially been announced, I don't believe, but Star Wars Jedi. Star Wars Jedi, of course, is going to be the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm saying Star Wars Jedi because we don't know what the subtitle will be, but we're definitely getting a sequel to that game. Respawn really brought in some cash with that game. It was a big success, critically and commercially. So we're getting a sequel to that game. Great. I like that game. I thought it was pretty good. It does have its problems, but it's pretty good overall, and it deserves a sequel, especially because the story ends in a way that it's setting things up for the future. So we're getting that as well. That's still from EA. EA's exclusivity deal doesn't expire until 2023. Or maybe it's expired now. Who knows, maybe they've scrapped it altogether. It's hard to say. This could just be Lucasfilm's game saying, hey, this is what's coming after 2023. This is what we're planning for the future. The EA deal is gone, but right now it's still in place. So 2023 onwards is what we're really talking about, I think, here. We could also be getting Battlefront 3. So yes, Battlefront 2 released to a lot of controversy with microtransactions issues and progression issues and so on and so forth. There was also a problem with some people didn't like the amount of content in there. But they really made up content wise from Battlefront 1 and it was an improvement overall from Battlefront 1. I think we are going to get a Battlefront 3 at some point. I think they're going to learn from the mistakes of Battlefront 2. And so I'm saying Battlefront 2, they have went in there and over time they've fixed a lot of the problems, they've addressed a lot of the issues. The game is pretty good nick now as far as I'm aware. I haven't played it in a while. But yeah, the game is much better now than what it was when it launched. But yeah, those are all the games that we are aware of to some extent. But here's some of the games that I want to see from this new Lucasfilm Games division. So the big one, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, the first game was made by Bioware, the second game was made by Obsidian. I like both of the games, although it's worth saying that the second game was not finished. There were certain story threads that just did not end, certain character arcs that did not end. They rushed that out the gate, but still a good game despite that. Bioware might be a little busy because they're trying to reboot Anthem, they're bringing back Mass Effect, they're doing Dragon Age 4. How much more can they have on their plate? They are still an, an EA company, so that deal still works out. They could be working on that in secret in the back of it, but I doubt it to be honest because of how much they've got going on. Obsidian, meanwhile, they're working on a new game. They've got a new game coming out called Avowed, I think it is. It's a fantasy RPG. And they've also got the, the, the Bugs Life, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids kind of thing that they've got going on, which is an open-ended game of a service kind of stuff. Will they be able to handle that? I also imagine they're going to be making a sequel to The Outer Wilds, or The Outer Worlds, sorry. Again, these two companies, probably too busy to do KOTO. So I think KOTO might actually be a while off and I think this is more wishful thinking than anything else. But hey, you could open it up, have another studio come in and do that. Why not? Reboot it from the ground up. And here's the one that I kind of really want. Star Wars Pod Racer. So yeah, Star Wars Pod Racer, a game based on a cool sequence in a bad Star Wars movie. A Star Wars movie I actually like, but that's another argument and discussion altogether. Imagine a modern day Star Wars pod race game with modern, up to date graphics and visuals and physics. The physics are really important. Imagine it being a pod racing game with burnout style crashes and explosions and action and realistic physics and so on. That would be cool. Because Star Wars pod racer, when it first came out, was a pretty decent game. It was a pretty decent racing game but you never really felt like you were on the edge of your seat. You never really felt like at any moment you could crash and die. So I think a modern version of that would be really cool. 
You could have big multiplayer open destructive environments. You could have a lot of interesting stuff going on there. It would be canonical of course. You could actually explain why in the new sequel trilogy time period pod racing has been banned. So yeah that's a thing that's a officially a thing so maybe this could be the downfall of pod racing in terms of the story if you have a story but yeah a lot of potential there another one Star republic commandos so republic commandos was a first person tactical shooter in the same vein of like rainbow six for example you could totally bring that back give it a new look maybe you do just make it a remake of the original or maybe you have it focused on like i don't know the bad batch have each member have different skills and abilities, make it a multiplayer game, why not? Have a multiplayer mode, have a campaign mode or whatever. Each character has their own skills and abilities, each bringing their own uniqueness to every environment, every level, every mission. It would be story driven, it would be squad based. I think that would be good, pretty good and interesting and cool. But hold on just a second, you're probably thinking, is Lucasfilm Games only going to make Indiana Jones and Star Wars games? Of course not. Lucasfilm Games has a history of a lot of other things out there as well. So things like Full Throttle, things like Monkey Island. This is the one that I really, really want. A reboot or a relaunch or a remake of Monkey Island. You can go all nostalgic and make it point and click. You can go all like retro with it. But I actually want it to be more modernized. More modernized controls, more modernized look and appeal to it. Maybe have some like RPG mechanics in there. It doesn't have to be action oriented at all because the Monkey Island games weren't really action oriented. They had a few action scenes, but a lot of it was story, character and comedy. You could totally do that in a modern sense. Bring it into modern audiences and just make this a very accessible action adventure comedic game for new audiences. So that's Lucasfilm Games. Heading into the future, we're going to be seeing a lot of new games in Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and possibly others. They haven't announced too much yet beyond the Indiana Jones game and this Ubisoft Star Wars game, but I think we're going to get a lot of stuff. And a lot of the stuff isn't going to be out for a while yet. I think it's after 2023 when the EA deal comes out, probably even a few years after that until we start to really see the outcome of products. And I think we're still going to get EA games like Jedi Fallen Order 2 or KOTOR maybe, and who knows. But yeah, Lucasfilm Games, a lot of potential in the future. I'm Graham Burton, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, why not subscribe to my channel and watch some of my video game streams. You can also go over to Twitter and Instagram and follow me at the underscore Graham Burton to get all of my thoughts and opinions up to date as I get them. Until next time though, thanks for watching.